everybody feeling good tonight? Yeah. Good to be in New York City, isn't it, huh? Yeah. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. I'm so excited about tonight's show. You know, down south, we eat a lot of catfish. We bake it, we poach it, we fry it, we smoke it. Hey! And not just in New Orleans, not just in Louisiana, but the South. Great catfish. And tonight, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little catfish cookery 101. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going to start tonight. I'm going to show you a great appetizer using catfish and making it into a terrine. One of my favorite things, I've been doing this dish for years. We're going to show you how to make a smoked catfish terrine. It's fantastic. And a spicy lemon tartar sauce with catfish beignets, a little New Orleans style. And I'm going to show you how to take catfish, wrap it in potato to make a potato crust, and serve it with a Lyonnaise of Merlotons. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then, everybody still like uh, hot food in here? Yeah. You like it hot? Yeah. I'm going to show you hot, hot, hot. <laughs> show you how to make catfish sauce piquant. Oh. A delicious, delicious New Orleans dish. Speaking about piquant, ha, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> It's all about catfish, as in the catfish cabin, right here on Emerald Live. How you doing? See these uh, lovely turners? Aren't these nice? Yeah. It's a little present for everybody in the audience from the Catfish Institute to you. Absolutely. Jay, there better be one for me, too. Now, I want to just give you, uh, as we mostly start every show with a little bit of information, Growing up as a kid in the Northeast, we used to catch catfish, but you know, catfish wasn't really, really popular where I grew up. Until now, it's like exploded. And people used to think, maybe some of you still do think, that catfish kind of tastes dirty, kind of muddy. And um, all of that whole thing has changed, I'd say probably in the 60s, starting probably in the Mississippi Delta when they started farm raising catfish. And today, at least our uh, stat pro upstairs, 190,000 acres of catfish farming going on in this country. It's unbelievable, you think about that. Last year, over 150,000 tons of catfish. That's a lot of catfish. And out of that 190,000 acres, 100, over 110,000 acres are done just in Mississippi. So a little over 60% of the farms, mostly coming from Mississippi. And now you see it everywhere. Uh, you see it here in menus in New York, supermarkets, everywhere you go, but particularly in the South, as I said early, you can get some good catfish. Let me show you one of my favorite little appetizers. It sounds fancy schmancy as a smoked catfish terrine, but let me show you this thing real fast. This is one of those really cool stovetop smokers. Whether you have an electric stove, gas stove, you can do it outside, but you can really do this in your home kitchen. Matter of fact, these folks even make one half a size now of this. So if you want to just keep it on contained in one burner. Few different things with this. The bottom, what we have here 
We've lined with some soaked, we soak these in water overnight, hickory chips. There are other types of woods, mesquite, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a big fan of, of hickory. So we have that. Then you have the drip tray that fits in here, okay? And also, and they have kept m more and more improving these things. See, here's the little ingredient tray that if you want to put your chicken or you want to put your sausage, you want to put, as we're going to do, catfish. And then this little deal here, okay, sort of slides right inside of this thing. It sort of slides right on. And the reason why I'm doing this and showing you this first is because what happens is that you want to get that in there and you want to get it intact, including your ingredients, before you turn on the heat. As soon as you turn the heat on, obviously it's metal, it's going to start expanding. When you turn the heat on, whether it's electric or gas, it's going to start getting hot on the bottom and it's going to start smoking. The mesquite's going to start letting this smoke go. I just season my catfish fillets with a little salt and pepper or a little essence, a little oil, put it in the ingredient, turn it on, 30, 40 minutes, we're going to have smoked catfish, okay? It's that simple. So, what do I mean by a terrine? Well, this is like a terrine mold. Hey, call it a meatloaf shaper if you want. You're not going to hurt my feeling. Boy, this is a serious crowd, isn't it? That? <laughs> What's going on? I thought it was New York. Do we have the right audience? <laughs> I hope they didn't think they were seeing that Jerry guy. <laughs> Well, maybe it is, huh, Doc? I don't know, man. <laughs> maybe you need to lighten them up a little bit. Let's kick it up. Kick it up a little. When we come back, I'm going to show you this catfish terrine. Stick around, Doc Gibbs. Come on! in the Emerald Live Band. Yeah. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Emerald Lagasse, it's Catfish Cabin tonight. We're just getting ready to really kick it up right now. 30, 40 minutes. My catfish fillets with a little essence. Nice and smoky. Hey, folks, you can do this the day before. Don't have to make all that pressure. Enough pressure around right now. You don't need to be building any more up. So once you're ready to start making this pate or this terrine, if you will, I'm going to start out with uh, one of those about eight ounces of cream cheese. Make sure it's soft, okay, because that way you don't going to beat it up. What I do is to, uh, to really start, I'll uh, usually get it really started first before I start adding other ingredients. Once I got it soft, then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my Pieces of smoked catfish. Oh, yeah, just wait. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, ha, ha. Just wait. Now, mmm, nice and hickory smelling. Should be a cologne like this. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of green onions. You know, dill, a little bit of dill goes a long way. And not everybody's like a fan of dill. So she's shaking her head over there. She's a dill enemy. <laughs> no, it goes a long way. So just if you don't, if you're not crazy about it, you don't even really need it. I'm just going to add a little bit in there, okay? I'm going to add a little bit of parsley in here. <laughs> Horseradish. Oh, yeah, man. Add a little horseradish in there. And the juice of a lemon or some. 
Now, if you want to cut it in half, see that, how juicy that was? It exploded. Wow. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fork a lemon right now. Juicy. See, no seeds when you do that. See? It's the ingenuity of forking a lemon. Now, you got that? I took some whipping cream just till about it was a little stiff. We're going to add some of that in there. Just going to make it nice and light. Okay? And then what we're going to do now, little essence. <laughs> A little hot sauce, don't you think? Yeah. Hey, look, and since we've come this far, let's kick it up with a little cognac, too, right? Yeah. Right on. Then you put all that together, you'll start working that down. The catfish will begin to start breaking down. Come on, baby. Come on. You can feel the love in here right now. It's catfish love. So once that all comes together, we'll add a little bit of salt, and we'll come back and re-season it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to scrape this down, make sure we got it all on the side, Taste a little bit. Oh, man. <laughs> Gonna finish pureeing it. Now what I did is in this terrine mold, big fancy name, I lined it with plastic wrap. And then once it's all combined, we got a piece on the loose over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's going to be. <laughs> well, I have to get it. <laughs> so now, come on, give me a break. OK. Get it all nice and smooth, folks. Put it inside of the mold. Okay, press it, fold your plastic wrap over one side, fold it over the other side. This is the great thing about this. Put your little lid on here, which is going to press it, okay? And in, the, and in the ice box it goes. You can do this a day ahead, two days ahead. Talk about a fantastic, fantastic appetizer. I like to serve this with a little bit of croutons, you can do cucumbers and a little lemon, but before I get there, I want to explain to you the most important part of this thing setting up. Do you know what I mean by that? So that it stands up like a pate or stands up like a terrine. To do that, the last ingredient before you put it inside of the mold, you want to bloom a little bit of unflavored gelatin. Okay? It's plain gelatin. And what I mean by bloom is you start First of all, you dissolve the gelatin. That's why they have. <laughs> oh, look, a whisk for a four-year-old. <laughs> so you want to dissolve this, and don't panic. See? Then you bring it up to temperature, folks, which is going to let and react the gelatin just a second or two. You pour that in here last, then inside of the mold, and that's what's going to get really, really, really good and hard, your terrine. The great thing about these things is that, like I said, going to have a party here on uh, 
you know, maybe on Saturday, you can really make this thing so far in advance. It's great. That's the great thing about these. Because when you're ready, you just sort of take them right out of the mold. <laughs> That's some good gelatin. <laughs> you see? And then you just sort of rinse this out, put up your little terrine mold, and then you unmold this out of the wrap. Whoa! It's like a basketball right now. So folks, what you can do is you can either serve this whole like this. Kind of what I like to do at a potty is to put it on the mold like this, a little platter, and then I put, see, because you can use these, you see? You can use these as a, oh yeah. Yeah, get your own show. <laughs> See, you can do that. And then, of course, the other great thing that works is like this. Or you can put one of those spreaders. You've seen those spreaders, right? You put one of these spreaders out, put that there, croutons over there or on there. There you have it. Smoked catfish terrine. Now, if you go to New Orleans, you go to a place called Cafe Du Monde, you have these sugared beignets, right? right. Have them with chicory coffee. Right. You go to a restaurant, at least one of mine, you can have a savory, which means not sweet, beignet, and catfish is one of them. Check this out. We're going to take and start with a little bit of olive oil in a skillet. And we're going to add some onion, a little bit of bell pepper, today happens to be red, a little green onion, and we're going to add just a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. some essence. We're going to start cooking that. Once this cooks for about two or three minutes, I'm going to dice up this catfish Season it with essence in cubes, little pieces like this, manageable ones. Why? Well, I don't think you'd be eating a piece this big <laughs> in one shot. But hey, so we're going to dice it up, essence. After about two minutes, we're going to start that in here. You with me so far? Yeah. To have a great beignet, you got to have a good sauce. So I'm going to show you a very, very, very quick sauce that we're going to make. We're going to emulsify an egg. To that egg, we're going to add onion. I think we should have a little garlic, too. What do you think, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garlic. Yeah. A little Dijon mustard. And then what we're going to do is the juice of a lemon and a lime. No seeds. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to emulsify that. How do you do that? Watch. We're going to take that and slowly stream in, slowly stream in the olive oil. It's going to make like a mayonnaise, emulsified. All right, I'm going to add the catfish in there. I'm going to keep drizzling in this olive oil. When we come back, another notch. Stick around.
We got the awesome Cliff on keyboards, folks. We got Lewis on horns. Mr. Teddy on drums. Thank you very much. And you know Doc Gibbs is in the house. All right, while you were going away, doing whatever, getting one of them frozen things, we were having a little catfish party. The catfish terrine is out right now, out and about. Some of you uh, just dig in. Don't worry about him, ladies. <laughs> now, there's one thing that you walk away with tonight. This batter that I'm going to show you is very easy. Once you got the batter down, you can really make whatever kind of beignet you want. So if you want, like, an artichoke beignet, you could do that. If you want mushroom beignets, crawfish beignets, hey, you could have vegetable beignets. There's the batter. And what I've done to the bell peppers and onion and green onion, as you can see, I diced the catfish, sprinkled it with essence, a little more olive oil, and I got it sauteed. But they're not like the catfish isn't fully cooked. It's about half to three quarters there. We want to let this just sort of cool a little bit. It's almost there. Now, let me show you the batter. What we're going to do is we're going to start roughly about 12 ounces or so of milk. You could use half, half and half. It'll be a little bit richer. Three eggs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to whisk these up. So now once we get the eggs, we're going to season this first, okay? We're going to come back and re-season it, but we're going to season this. We're going to season this with a little bit of salt. A little hot sauce, okay? Yeah. By the way, you thought I forgot. I didn't forget. When we went away, I made that lemon with that little lime that little tartar sauce, that little dipping sauce, right? This is what it looks like. You can make that ahead of time. Put it in the ice box, even the day before. So now we got salt, pepper, eggs, and milk. Wow. <laughs> We're building it. <laughs> now the first thing we're going to give is a little baking powder. That's what's going to make it poof up, a little poofy. And then we're going to add some flour to this now to make our batter. Now, see, these are nice folks here. I didn't add it all at one time. I didn't, I didn't turn it on. Look, clean as a whistle right now. All right, now, look, you can always add, but it's very difficult to take away. You see, this now has the consistency sort of, of like a pancake batter or a crepe batter, right? Not enough. See, look, too loose. Try putting that in the fry, in the oil. Huh. You got a mess on your hands. So we add a little bit more flour. Now we'll see how this comes together here. Scraping down the sides. See, now this is, oh, it's good. But it's still, ask yourself, self. Can that go in the fry oil? No. You got it. <laughs> now we're going to add a little more flour to this. Oh, yeah. Oh. There's a reason for my madness, and I'm going to show you. It's like clam cakes, you know? or corn cakes. What we're going to now do is this. We're going to do a little test. What we're going to test it, real simple, we're going to add the catfish and the bell pepper and the onions right to that. 
And we're going to fold this now into our batter. Oh, yes. See, this is folding, folding, not stirring. Now, is that going to go inside of the oil? Maybe. Just dust it a little. Folding. Okay, folks, now vegetable oil, either in the stove, your little fry guy, whatever you got, test one. Here's how we're going to test one. 360 degrees, two spoons. Going to go in to the batter, okay? Going to come to the fry oil. We're going to drop it in. It's about 360 degrees, and we're going to see for two reasons. A, is it going to fry and not fall apart? And B, I want to taste it. Look, see, it just poofed and popped up. <laughs> see? Now, I want to taste it before I use all of you as guinea pigs. I want to taste it when we come back. Another notch! <laughs> Everybody, Emeril Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, we're cooking, really, really cooking from the catfish cabin tonight and uh, catfish beignets. Uh, hopefully, you didn't miss this. We dropped one, we uh, fried it. You see, you got to turn them. They're like donuts. So, you got to turn them so that they are evenly cooked like that. Do you get a shot of that, you? See, like that. And then remember this when they come out of the fry oil, that's when you season them. Speaking about when I tasted the one that I tested, I actually added some essence and a little more hot sauce to it. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then what you can do, you do these in a couple of batches. Your guests come, your family's around. Put them right in the center there. Then we'll take these out. Oh, these are even more beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. Remember, when you're frying anything, that's when you want to season it. As soon as it comes out of the hot oil is when you want to season it. They're vulnerable then. <laughs> we add just a little tiny bit of salt. A little essence on there. Oh, yeah, babe. See, and then you just sort of, oh. And then we got the lemon dipping sauce. Just dip it in there. They're hot now. It's because we really cook on this show. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes I amaze myself. There you go, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, Isn't, aren't those yeah. good? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You put, a, put a little catfish beignet between your cheek and gum. That'll, uh, <laughs> that'll make you happy, happy. There you go. They're hot, folks, because they just come out of the fryer. See? We really do cook on this show. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, there you have it. Catfish beignets, all right? Yeah, babe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I but stole it from him. I, I mean, it. figure it out. I, I somehow I, I, it was I just. Shot it. I uh, just. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, babe. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Lovely. What a guy. Okay, Lovely. baby. Thank you very much. I'm serious. I'm serious. You might, uh, if you go to a sort of. Hispanic shopping place. You might uh, see the sign for these called chayotes. If you're in New Orleans, they're merlotons. If you're uh, a couple hours out of the city, they could be called, that would be New Orleans, they could be alligator pears. But they're good. And they taste a little bit like a pear, 
Although we use them, we stuff them, we do all kinds of things. I boiled them. Fork tender. There's an outer skin that I took off of these and a seed in the center. No big deal. And then what I did is I sliced them just like a pear. I took about four or five little onions and in some olive oil, I've been cooking them down, caramelizing them. What does that mean? See, look, caramelizing, look. It's when it starts getting like that caramel color. The sugars are coming out, the natural sugars. Oh, makes you happy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little Merloton sort of lionese, which means with onions. I'm gonna add a little bit of thyme. Gotta add a little bit of garlic. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add now the blanched Merlotons right on this. Mix them up a little bit. Now you can also layer them. If you wanna layer them, layer them. Then what I like to do is I just take a little bit of butter, a little more salt, fresh ground pepper, and then, folks, I got the oven on about 350 degrees. What we're going to do is put some Parmesan cheese like this now. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> They'll all be doing that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this right inside of the oven. So we're going to have a little nice lionese of Merloton. Now, I've got this gadget here, which is a vegetable threader. Peel the potato. You sort of just put it right at the end over here like this. <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of do that. When that happens to you, don't get alarmed. Cut a little base, okay, and try it again. Put it right inside there. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, what happens when you start threading this, you can get all different kinds of size, like spaghetti. You with me? What I got were these threads of potato. You see? Oh, yeah, check this out. You take a nice piece of catfish, season it with a little essence, right? Take a little bit of Dijon mustard or Creole mustard, okay? What that's gonna do is adhere the potato. You take the potato like this, squeeze the water out. Then what we're gonna do is wrap the catfish. You see that? We're gonna wrap the catfish. Now, what we're first gonna do now, take a skillet, some olive oil, We're going to take our catfish wrapped with potato crust and we're going to start cooking them in the olive oil. We come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around, okay? Back in! with Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band here in New York City having a good old time. <laughs> Cooking some catfish. All my friends down there in Mississippi. Look at this. See how it looks? You know, you can't rush it. You know, people, they just think that, you know, you just turn the stove on full blast. You know, don't do that. That's why they have these knobs. Okay? It's a food of love thing. Look, this is like on medium heat. You can't let it cook too fast. Potato gets cooked, the fish is going to be raw. 
Just take it easy a little bit. Slow down there, Charlie. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do now... Oh, I started making a roux. But I'm going to tell you that in a second. There's that casserole of merloton, lyonnaise. Look at that. Put a little bit of that on your cheek and gums, like that, okay? Oh, yeah. And then... And then you take that catfish with the potato crust right on top of that, okay? And that mustard gives it a really, really nice flavor as well. Little wild watercress. There you have it, potato crust and catfish, folks. I told you I started making a roux with a little bit of oil and flour, equal pots, and I've been stirring it on and off. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. See, they don't really think we cook, you know. I think we're flopping those Christmas cards around or something, you know, but anyhow. <laughs> if I was making a dark gumbo, I would keep cooking this roux and cooking this roux. But again, use your knob. You can't, like, have it all jacked up. It's like medium heat. It's a food of love thing. You know, if it was that simple, you could just go get a can and psh, <laughs> Why cook? Go get yourself about six dozen TV dinners and stay at home. <laughs> now, the reason why I'm doing this roux, you see, I'm not, I don't want it dark, but I want... You, you, I wish you could smell this. I would call the cable company and complain you don't have smell of vision <laughs> Now, when I get that color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the trinity in there. Celery, bell pepper, and onions, okay? Sauce piquant. What does that mean? It means hot to taste, okay? So you could have it super hot if you want. I mean, you could jack it up. I mean, blow the roof off the place if you wanted to. Now, how do you achieve that? Well, a couple of different ways. One way that we're going to do that is by using a little bit of crushed red pepper, okay? A little salt and a little cayenne pepper, okay? Now, once these vegetables cook in the roux, about five or six minutes. We're gonna add a little bit of fish stock, or you could use shrimp stock, or you could use water. If you use water, just make sure to season it, because I don't know where you get yours, where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> You're gonna work that roux in there. See the color it's got already? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some garlic, we're going to add some bay leaf. We're going to add some green onions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add tomato. Okay? Stir that in. Let it come to a boil. Turn the heat down. Let it simmer. Let it simmer. Let it simmer. <laughs> After it simmers, about an hour and 15 minutes, it should look like this. See that? Now, here's what we're going to do. They have this heat on, like... I could cook an elephant on this thing. <laughs> so now, what you do, folks, is you taste, okay? You taste and see now how hot, how piquant is the sauce. Woo! <laughs> Little Worcestershire, right? Oh, no, wait. Now I'm going to take catfish pieces with some essence, put them inside of the sauce piquant. You see that? When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Okay. To finish... 
To finish this catfish dish, I made some jalapeno corn muffins. Oh, yeah, these ain't no little sissy muffins either. Now, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take one of these out, and we're going to split it with a serrated knife. We're going to use the bottom like this, and then we're going to take that catfish sauce piquant that's been simmering, okay, right in on the muffin like this. Oh. Ah, a little more for my friends. Put the muffin on top, little parsley, little green onions. There you have it, a delicious catfish dish, okay? Hey, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.